Good afternoon, game theorists, or good morning, or good night. Not quite sure when you're watching this. I'm recording this in the afternoon, so I'll stick with good afternoon. So now we'll look at the Vickery game, also known as a second price auction, and we'll establish what is the best strategy. And we'll see if in the in-class game you guys followed that best strategy or not. So as before, notation will be using B for your bid and V is the value. So in the discussion board for each group, I assign what your group thinks the value is. It's a bit different for each group because with many objects out there, the valuation is subjective. So if you're going to an art auction, for example, you might think that pain is worth $1,000, and some other art collector might think it's worth $800. You had different valuations of the same thing. So consider three possibilities. Should you bid above your value, below your value, or equal to your value? To your value? We already established that in a first price auction, you might bid a little bit below your value. The second price auction, though, is different, so that might alter our conclusions. So this picks the numbers. Let's say the value is a hundred. And you pick a bid B of one ten. Could it ever be the right strategy? Well, let's suppose that the if the highest bid's above one ten. Doesn't matter, gonna lose the auction. Now, if the highest bid from someone else is below 110, you win the auction. There are a couple possibilities for how that can affect your payoff. So let's say the next highest bidder made a bid of 95. Well, that works out very well, nicely for you. You win the auction, but you pay the second highest amount. Remember, second, high, second price auction means you pay, you pay a second highest bid. So your payoff in that case will be 100, the value of the object, minus your bid, which is 5. Well, that's good. You like getting a positive payoff. But there are more possibilities. The next highest bid might be between 100 and 110. So maybe the next highest bidder picked um, 105. So you win the auction because you bid 110, they bid 105, then you pay the amount of the second highest bid. So you pay 105. What does that mean for your payoff? Your payoff is going to be divide the object 100 
minus the amount you pay, 105, that comes out to minus 5. Well, that's no good. You could have gotten 0 by losing the auction. So in this case, you end up overbidding and you overpay. You get the winner's curse. So is that an acceptable risk to get this potential benefit of winning a positive payoff? So this other scenario, you got a positive payoff. The answer turns out to be no. That's because you had an alternative strategy that would have been better. So if you bid V equals V, bid equal to your valuation, a bit of a hundred in this example, then you can avoid that winner's curse altogether. So let's verify that claim. So again, these three scenarios we had, the highest bid is over 110, you lose the auction no matter what. You would loss if you bid 110, you still would have lost if you bid 100, so it doesn't matter in that case. Now the next highest bid is below 100, like a bid of 95. In this case, you still get a benefit from winning. Because you don't pay 100 you bid, you pay the next highest person bid, if you pay 95, you still get that benefit of 5. So you have to value the option of 100 because you won the auction by bidding 100 and you pay that next highest bid 95 and you still get that payoff of positive 5 just like you did before. So to summarize, if the next highest bid is below 100, then bidding 100 and bidding 110 both give you the same outcome. They both give you a payoff of five either way. Also, if the next highest bid is above 110, then again, you lose the auction either way, so they're the same. So is bidding 100 always gonna be the same outcome as bidding 110? The answer is no, because of this last case down here. So the last case when the next highest bid is between 100 and 110.
So if you bid 100 and someone else bid 105, they're going to win the auction, not you. So your payoff would be zero in that case. However, that's an improvement over the other possibility. So back when you bid 110, you had this winner's curse when the other person bid 105 and it got a negative payoff. So to see what's going on here, in two cases out of three, bidding 100 instead of 110 gives you the same outcome. If the next highest bid is above 110, you lose either way, it's the same. If the next highest bid is below 100, you win either way and get the same payoff either way. So the same in those cases. However, if the next best bid is between 100 and 110, like a bid of 105, in that case, it's better to bid 100. So, Bidding equal to your value has all the same benefits, but with no chance of a winner's curse. So bidding your value is better than bidding above your value. More precisely, bidding your value weakly dominates bidding above your value. So this analysis says we should never intentionally overbid even in a second price auction. All right, so ruled out overbidding, but should we ever possibly underbid? Remember back in our first price auction, the more traditional where you pay what you bid, in that case, underbidding was optimal. You wanted to bid high enough to win the auction but then you also want to bid low enough so you still get some surplus from winning the auction. So is that still the right strategy in a second price auction? Let's check. So that was worth 100, should you bid something like 90? Is that better than bidding your value of 100? So let's explore different cases. So perhaps the highest bid out there by the other bidders is above 100. Maybe someone's bidding 105 out there. Well, in that case, you lose the auction either way. If you bid 90 or if you bid 100, you're going to lose the person who bid 105. So it doesn't matter in that case. Now let's say the highest bid had been something below 90. Maybe the next highest bidder had chosen 85. Well, 
Well, in that case, it also does not matter if you had bid 90 or if you bid 100. So if they're bidding 85, either bid of 90 or 100 would suffice to win the auction. Because you pay the second highest bid, you'd be paying 85 either way, so it really doesn't matter. Same payoff either way. Thus, in both cases so far, bidding below your value and bidding equal to your value don't matter. Same outcome. Now, there's one last case where the outcome is different. And that one, it will depend upon if you bid your value or if you bid below your value. That case will then tell us which strategy is better. So roll with it. What if the next highest bid is above 100? I looked at if it's below 90. Last possible case, the highest bid out there is between 90 and 100. So maybe they bid 95. So if you bid 90, you're going to lose the auction. 95 bid beats your bid of 90. Your payoff in that case would be zero. Now it's compared to what happens when you bid your value. So if 100 is going to win this auction, 100 is going to beat this next highest bid of 95. And yeah, it's a second price auction, so you don't pay 100, you pay the second highest bid, 95. So your payout would be 100 minus 95, which equals 5. So what's our conclusion? In these first two cases, it did not matter if you bid equal to your value or below your value. They're the same in that case. However, in this third case, now it does matter. Bidding your value here is better than bidding below your value. So it's better to bid your value. Bidding your value, B equals V, is going to weakly dominate underbidding. So unlike a first price auction, here underbidding is no longer optimal.
So what does that leave us with? We established earlier that bidding your value is going to weakly dominate overbidding. Bidding your value just established also weakly dominates underbidding. So that means that the best option is to bid your value. So in that victory game, if your group was told the value of the object is 104, you should have bid 104. If your group was told the value of the object is 108, you should have bid 108, etc. So that wraps up our episode on strategy in a victory auction. Last thing I want to say about this is look at the strategy for the sellers. At the in part one of this chapter, I mentioned why would a seller ever want to do a second price auction rather than a first price auction? It seems better for the seller to collect the highest bid rather than the second highest bid. But now we know that because he'll bid differently in those auctions, then they could actually be equally good for the seller. So on the surface, it's better to get the highest bid, but in a first price auction, people underbid. So you're getting the highest bid, but it's gonna be an underbid. In a second price auction, you don't get the highest bid anymore, you're getting a second highest bid. However, people are gonna bid higher because now people are free to bid their value. They're not going to underbid anymore. So actually would expect the revenue for the seller to be equal in a first price auction versus a second price auction. So that's our section on victory auctions and strategy for sellers. Come and join us for our next episode, which will look at all pay auctions.